Good afternoon. My name is Brianna Wyatt, and I'm an assistant professor in the Soil and Crop Sciences Department at Texas A&M University. Today I'm going to be presenting uh, the results of a project we recently completed regarding testing a novel cosmic ray neutron detector um, in a field with highly variable soil texture. But before I start, I want to acknowledge my co-authors, Cade Flynn and Kevin McInnes, um, and in particular, I want to acknowledge Cade. So Cade is the one who uh, really led this study and who did the, the majority of the work. So the, the things that I'm showing today are really Cade's work. Many of you are likely aware of neutron detectors and their use uh, in estimating field scale soil moisture. On the right hand side here, we have a diagram that shows the sensing radius and uh, typical sensing depth for one of these detectors. So these neutron detectors are able to um, effectively bridge the gap in spatial scale between point measurements or estimates of soil moisture and remote sensing measurements of soil moisture. They're also able to provide um, continuous measurements in time. Some of the drawbacks though, are that interpreting and applying the soil moisture data from these detectors can be somewhat tricky uh, because the measurement radius and depth vary depending on the amount of hydrogen in the environment. Probably the larger drawback though is the fact that these types of detectors are currently quite expensive um, and their use is really cost prohibitive outside of the realm of research. So in this study, we compared two types of neutron detectors. The first um, is a helium-3 neutron detector from Hydroinova. So this is a commercially available detector. Um, these, these are the, the more expensive types of detectors. So these cost upwards of $15,000 per sensor. So we, on the left-hand side, we have a picture of Cade installing uh, one of these detectors at our field site. And then the goal of our project was to compare a new type of neutron detector with these hydroanova detectors. So these new detectors um, are from Radiation Detection Technologies, which is a startup out of Kansas State University. And these detectors use an enriched lithium foil, which is a byproduct of the production of lithium ion batteries. And because of the, uh, the abundance of lithium ion batteries and the strong production of these, these batteries, um, lithium foil is quite a bit less expensive to use than helium-3. So these um, lithium foil modules only cost about $2,500, though you do need multiple modules to create a single sensor. So for those of you that have never seen one of these lithium foil detectors uh, before, I thought I'd include a photo. So on the left side, we have a picture of the inside of one of these detectors. So we have here three lithium foil modules. Those are the silver uh, rectangles that you see there. And they're inside a high density polyethylene uh, case. On the right hand side, you can see what the, what the unit looks like installed in the field. Um, so I said each of these modules is about $2,500. So that means this unit costs approximately $7,500, which while that's not cheap, it's still less than half of what one of the uh, helium-3 detectors costs. So it's a pretty significant cost savings. So the location of this study is in Southeast Texas at the Texas A&M Beef Center. So you can see in uh, sub-figure B here, we have the lithium foil detector and the helium-3 detector installed at the site. We also had an all-in-one weather station as well as subsoil moisture sensors installed at 5, 10, and 20 centimeters below the surface. However, possibly the, the most interesting thing about this site is the high variability of soil texture that we see um, in a relatively small area. So on the right hand side here, you can see the location of the neutron detectors uh, as indicated by the yellow star here in the center of the figure. And then we have the yellow concentric circles, which indicate distances of 50, 100, and 150 meters from those detectors. So within that detection area, we have three um, really quite different soil types. Right in the middle of the field, 
we have a silty clay loam with 19% sand and 31% clay. Uh, so this is a very heavy, very clay, very silty soil. And then to the south and to the west, we have a silt loam, which is 25% uh, sand and 18% clay, so a little bit more sandy. And then to the north and to the east, we have a loamy sand, which is 82% sand and only 5% clay. So especially on the north and east sides of the field here, um, there's a really strong soil texture gradient. To capture the influence of these changes in soil texture on the soil moisture, we conducted four field surveys using a hydrosense probe, which is uh, just a TDR type probe uh, that is inserted vertically at the surface of the soil and has prongs that are 12 centimeters long. So we conducted these field surveys on four different dates shown here on the right hand side. So you can see um, the hydrosense measurements at each individual point as well as the trends over the entire field on each of these days. So in the upper left hand corner we have the number of measurement points and then in the lower left hand corner of each figure we have the mean and mean weighted volumetric water content for each day. So what's really interesting here is that these figures really clearly show the impact of the changes in soil texture on our soil moisture measurements in each of the four cardinal directions during these surveys. So we used these distance weighted volumetric water content values from each of our four survey dates to calibrate our neutron detectors for this location. I'm not going to show the calibration. Um, I don't have quite enough time to do that today. Um, but these are the points that we used to develop that calibration. Now, in comparing the neutron counts between the lithium foil and the helium-3 detectors, we see a really, uh, really strong correlation. So here I'm showing the normalized neutron counts, uh, which is calculated by uh, dividing the corrected neutron counts. So these are neutron counts corrected for uh, atmospheric pressure and water vapor, as well as the incoming neutron flux. So we take those corrected neutron counts divided by the n naught parameter. So this n naught parameter um, is derived from the calibration curves that we developed for each detector. So you can see that there's a really strong correlation here between the two different neutron detectors with an R square value of 0.72. Finally, we're able to convert the neutron counts into a volumetric water content. So that's what's shown in this figure. So we have the lithium foil detectors, estimated volumetric water content shown in gray, and the same for the helium-3 de detector shown by the solid black line. Then we have the Teros soil moisture sensors. Uh, so these are the sensors that were installed only in the center of the field in that heavy clay soil. Those are shown by the the black line, and then we have our four survey points located, are indicated by the red circles. So you can see overall the two detectors really do a, a, a really great job of agreeing here on the volumetric water content over time. And they also, you can see, clearly respond to these precipitation events. Um, you can see the dynamics here of the soil moisture. Um, but really what I want to drive home here is the difference between the helium-3 and lithium foil detectors. So the mean absolute difference in volumetric water content over this entire time period was 2.3 percent by volume. So really overall there's a great agreement between um, this more expensive detector and another cheaper detector. Also it's really evident from this figure, especially during the dry down periods, um, that the neutron detectors are able to capture um, the faster dry down that's occurring in those more sandy soils, while the Teros sensors um, show a slower dry down as a result of the heavy clay soil there in the center of the field. So these lithium foil and the helium-3 detectors uh, both were really able to capture the influence of that soil uh, texture and soil moisture variability in the field. So in conclusion, 
our lithium foil detector uh, performed really well as compared to uh, the commercially available alternative. Second, uh, both neutron detectors were able to capture the influence of the variable soil texture on those field average soil moisture values. And finally, we found that these uh, lithium foil detectors offer um, a really strong, in my opinion, a strong alternative um, to the helium-3 or um, even sometimes the boron trifluoride detectors. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions or comments that you have. Um, my email is also here if you'd like to send me an email. Thank you.